Yeah, hi. Doing hi. hi. A lot. So the floor um, is yours. Thank you so much. I hope you can see the slides. Um, great. So, um, yeah, uh, Ricarda um, asked me if I could tell you something about didactics. And um, yeah, I hope uh, that uh, you will all learn a bit about this interesting topic and how to create training. My um, slides, as you can see, are um, based on um, um, work that was done uh, in a project called FD Mentor. Um, uh, all the slides are also available online. Um, and um, I will also uh, share the link with you later on. So um, just checking if I can see the chat, sorry. Okay, great. Um, so um, what I want to tell you now um, are the seven steps of concept development. And um, before we start with um, uh, going into detail about concept development, I would like to know um, what, uh, from you especially, what could be criteria for good training? Um, so we will now uh, do a little bit of brainstorming together. Um, what yeah, what would you say? What could be criteria for good training? And we will collect your answers here um, on the slide. Anybody has some ideas? What makes a training a good training? Inspirational. Good structure, yeah, ins inspirational, yes. There are lots of comments also in the chat. Yes, um, it would be great if somebody could read it for me because it goes so fast. Uh, <laughs> I understand. Uh, so it says engaging, clarity, interactive, appropriate for the target group, a good scope, um, and um, I said know your audience, example. Mm -hmm. Take into account the knowledge of the audience. Well, I said so. Uh, make people feel competent. <laughs> Focus. Um, participant centeredness. I think that's a really good one. Um, actionable uh, advice. Motivated participants. No jargon. Exercises clear learning outcomes it's continuing it's it's too fast it's, it's great um so uh, i think we will um i hope it's possible to uh, store the chat um so i i will be able to also uh, collect your answers and um and um finish this uh and we already have a lot of very good um points here which we will now have a look at um more in detail I save this and we go on. Oh, sorry, I have to delete the. Yeah, now we can go on. So um, we already had um, some uh, some of the things uh, were already mentioned uh, by you, which is great. Um, so you see, um, you have a natural talent for giving training. Um, so in the beginning. Um, it is a, a good idea to open the topic. Um, uh, so all these seven steps we will look at um, in detail um, um, in, in the following um, slides. Um, first, you open the topic, then you clarify conditions. Um, this is a so-called 3T formula, which uh, I will explain um, in, in a few minutes. Um, you then uh, try to order, set priorities, and try to re reduce the content, which I think is the most difficult thing um, you can do in training, because there's so much to tell people, and you could do, um, yeah, you could do training for five days, but um, normally people don't have five days to do training, um, and so it is uh, really, really, really important um, to also reduce the content and uh, know what is uh, most important. Um, then um, it's um, useful to also develop a teaching script. We will also look at uh, what this is um, and, and how, it's, um, how it's done. Um, 
you usually create methods and exercises uh, that um, yeah um, that are fitting to your training context and the topic and uh, create working materials like um, handouts and stuff like that. And um, last but not least, um, it's uh, always a good idea to also make a proof of concept if everything works fine as you designed it. So um, starting with um, the opening, uh, the topic, uh, uh, this is um, something that um, um, is uh, normally done um, of, yeah, of a few weeks or even months before the training. And um, uh, it's uh, usually good to um, go with a clear head into this. So the leading question is what could all be part of this? Um, you have a, a topic, a general topic, and you collect all the contents, um, uh, all the materials that um, are uh, or could be relevant. Um, you don't have any restrictions or evalu evaluations um, at this uh, stage. Um, you should take notes um, and you should start early, as early as uh, possible. And um, I hope that um, some of you did um, this exercise um, that I explained on Monday, uh, because I would like uh, to now have a look at one or two of your um, homeworks. So um, if you created um, such a mind map, it would be great if you could share this um, together with us. So I will stop the sharing now. And I hope that um, one or two of you would be able or um, would like to, um, uh, to show the mind map that you created. Is there any participant who would like to to do this. Hi, uh, <clears throat> it's Irena talking. Yes, I, I could go ahead. I was using a different tool mm -hmm. though, but- um, It's uh, fine. So how do you like to do the share screen or? Um... Yeah, um, if you were able to do this, um, this would be, um, this would be good. See. And again, I'm not really certain if this is the direction that you want us to go. This but I looks was perfect. Thinking of, okay. So um, one of the elements that I was thinking about, and also uh, you know, going from from the the um, breakout rooms that uh, that we were, was thinking about uh, uh, specific specificities of uh, DMPs when we are working with uh, third-party data, so it's uh, not our own. And yeah, these are kind of the ideas that, that were in the back um, and um, talking about legal and ethical aspects. And then I had some ideas, uh, you know, uh, where you need to check, where you can get help, which tools you need. And then probably you will need to um, also, uh, this will affect your research processes uh, as well. So you might need a, a certain tool. Mm -hmm. uh, it is likely that it will, um, you know, affect the costs. You might think it's easier to, to actually work with third party data, but sometimes it's not uh, because you might need to, you know, uh, have some tools uh, or, or even buy data, like when you're uh, working with uh, OECD or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, it might be also an issue with the with the translation, especially if you are working with uh, older um, um, texts that might not be in Latin um, alphabet, uh, not even to say uh, language. But then also, I think it would be really useful for users at this event that we would actually showcase some use cases of most common kind of data that they could use, you know, what, what they could do as uh, examples in the back. So that's kind of short-ish. This is perfect. Thank you so much. Um, and as you can see, there are a lot of topics um, that um, can be covered and um, a lot of content. So if you imagine you have like um a slot for 15 minutes or even a half hour it might be difficult to cover all all these aspects and um if you have for example two hours um 
you can you can cover a lot more of these contents that you presented. So um, uh, I would thank you for sharing again, um, Irina. Um, I will now go to the um, slides again and um, talk about um, how to go on in the process of um, concept development. All right. Um, so um, something that um, you already mentioned in the chat also is um, that you have um, a specific amount of time, you have a specific tar target group, and you want um, to have um, a specific outcome, like uh, you have a, a target that you want uh, to um, yeah, uh, that you want uh, to achieve. And um, uh, your, your content and what you create in the training or what you want, want to, to tell people um, needs to be in this triangle. So um, if you don't have so much time, um, I, and this um, also um, has um, implications on the content and um, uh, yeah, you should also yeah, look, look how uh, you can best address your target group and what's most important for them to learn in this time and uh, to also, yeah, uh, achieve what you want to achieve. So um, this is something that um, should be kept in mind if you create training materials and a training concept. Um, and the next step uh, would be, um, as we have seen with the mind map, to get an overview of your contents. Um, that um, and uh, Irene, Irina showed this very well um, to ar arrange the contents thematically. So she already had this kind of categories. Um, you also see the connections with the lines, and. Um, the next step for Irina, for example, would be to evaluate the material according to relevance. So what, um, what, which kind of categories are most important for people to learn and uh, which um, are maybe not that important. Um, and um, as I already said, uh, you should um, select as much content as uh, the time frame fits in. Um, so if you have 15 minutes, only tell the most important um, points. And if you have two hours, you can go into detail and um, uh, explain more and um, also do some more exercises, for example. Uh, the next step would be to uh, develop a so-called teaching script. So um, a, a good teaching script um, has uh, three parts, um, like a very good um, uh, a book or um, a good um, a story um, would also um, have three parts. So you have an introduction phase, uh, which should um, ideally be um, both thematic as well as social. Um, as um, you already knew each other through the breakout sessions and everything, we didn't do this um, today, but um, normally um, I would um, also do some um, some uh, kind of group um, exercises uh, to make the social introduction easier so that people um, get to know each other. Um, but also you have a thematic um, introduction that um, you explain, for example, the agenda um, and uh, talk about uh, what you're going to do in the session, in the training. Then in the main part, uh, which, will, uh, which I will explain uh, in a minute, um, you have um, yeah the content that you want um, to um, to tell, and um, at the end um, you have the closure um, with maybe a conclusion, uh, maybe also a kind of um, transfer exercise. You give outlook and um, especially important also to um, uh, yeah to get feedback from your uh, audience. So um, how did they um, like um, your training and what could be better? Um, so the main part uh, is characterized um, by um, the learning process by Klaus Döring, which is the German uh, education uh, scientist. And um, this is, um, um, deep, uh, is, is parted in two phases, the inhalation and the exhalation phase. In the inhalation phase, um, 
uh, your trainer, uh, your trainees or your participants um, um, learn something. So um, for example, um, you try to gain interest, they perceive something, they process something, um, or they retain something. Um, this could be characterized by, um, um, by giving um, the, the participants um, a, a kind of lectures on um, uh, content that you want uh, to explain. Um, but uh, it could also um, be that um, you give out a handout and people look at it and um, let, try to learn something uh, with this. In the exhalation phase, um, your trainees uh, should, um, uh, or your participants should remember something, try to reproduce something, try to transfer the knowledge, and ideally also apply it. So this is more characterized by um, exercises and methods that uh, people can actually um, uh, work with and use. And the inhalation phase, um, at least in, in presence, face-to-face uh, uh, -face training, should not be longer than 20 minutes. This is um, really difficult for sometimes, uh, but um, this is a time uh, when people stop um, uh, yeah, being, um, having the attention. And um, uh, so you, you lose their attention after 20 minutes and um, people won't really um, learn something anymore. Um, in, yeah, in the e-learning context, um, this time is um, even less. Um, so people talk about like seven or eight minutes um, and after that, you should start with uh, an exercise, with uh, something else, and not, um, yes, uh, stop this uh, this lecture phase, for example. Um, yeah, and this um, these phases, the inhalation and exhalation, they um, change in the in the main part. So you have. Um, uh, inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, inhalation, exhalation, and um, at the end, the closure phase. Kirsten, we have uh, uh, one question and one comment, maybe sure. because before you move further. Sure. So the question uh, from Lisette is, do you, uh, how do you approach the social part when the group already know each other, but not you, the presenter? Yeah, uh, so um, uh, this is, um, yeah, then you save a lot of time, I would say. So um, if the people already know each other, they only um, need to know um, a bit about you. Uh, so you uh, present yourself and um, maybe you try to um, understand the target group or the, the group itself a bit more. Um, so um, let them maybe um, tell a bit about the group and who they are. Um, but um, you don't need to invest that much time if people already know each other. Um, so you can um, keep this time a bit, a bit less. Mm -hmm, thanks. And there's also a comment from Brita. You could do something about wishes and interest of your participants. Exactly. Yeah, that would be a good um, idea for the introduction, especially for the thematic introduction phase um, that uh, people um, uh, express um, what kind of expectations they have and you collect those and try to uh, best um, address them. Yeah, exactly. Um, in the next phase, you develop a so-called teaching script. And um, I would uh, just show you um, a teaching script that I created. Uh, you can't really read a lot about it, but um, uh, this is how uh, this training session is, um, is structured. Um, so uh, what I did is um, I um, thought about which com uh, components um, are needed for you to learn, uh, which kind of target um, uh, I want to address with this, uh, the time that um, I need for this um, in minutes, um, for example, then the content that is actually told um, uh, and uh, yeah, what I want to, to tell you. Um, in the modes of working, you just um, add, for example, presentation or group work or whatever. Um, uh, so what, how you want um, to, to present your content. Um, 
in the material column, uh, you can uh, write um, again slides or, um, for example, um, we looked at the mind map um, of uh, Irina. So uh, here you can um, also see at one glance um, which kind of materials you need to collect um, and, and have uh, prepared for your training session um, beforehand. Uh, this inhalation exhalation uh, column is just for um, uh, checking if you um, have um, these change processes after 20 minutes um, uh, at the last. Um, so you have um, a good, um, yeah, a good uh, 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 change between uh, those phases. Uh, voices sound just means that um, if your participants also um, are able to talk or uh, say something in, in the chat or something, like um, uh, participating actively um, in the training. Um, alternative is um, especially important if you have longer trainings and um, need um, to um, um, yeah, quickly change your, uh, your training um, method. So, um, for example, um, it's good to have short and long versions of um, materials or methods. Um, sometimes, so for some trainers, this is useful and helpful um, to switch, uh, to quickly be able to switch um, to another um, exercise, for example, if uh, time is running out and people have a lot of questions. Yeah, I just skipped the notes. This is just for um, yeah, your, for for your personal notes. For example, I um, had here in this um, in this example uh, enable screen sharing noted for um, I, uh, being able for uh, Irina to um, share her screen. So um, after um, the teaching script. You um, should create um, your methods and exercises um, uh, and um, the criteria for selecting uh, these methods are again the 3T formula, so the time, target and a target group. Um, the topic, of course, um, is important. The group size um, can be relevant. So if you have 90 people like um, in this room, you can't do um, all the exercises um, that um, are usually done with only small groups um, or, should, or it can be uh, difficult and you need uh, breakout rooms. Um, so you have to keep this in mind. Uh, also room conditions um, uh, could um, make a, um, um, uh, could be a, an important point. Um, if you're thinking about face-to-face. -face. Um, some rooms are uh, not very good uh, for making smaller group work uh, or doing smaller group work. Um, and um, sometimes you're uh, um, uh, working in, in um, mm, yeah, in, in uh, buildings uh, where you can't uh, leave this room uh, to uh, be able to um, make smaller groups and uh, work on, on um, specific tasks. Um, this is also important for the, um, for the, uh, uh, for e-learning, of course. So um, this, uh, it, if you choose, for example, Zoom or something else, uh, Big Blue Button and all the other tools that are available, um, this also comes with conditions. So with some of these tools, you can do breakout sessions very well. And um, with um, others, this um, doesn't work so well. So um, you should also look at your, um, yeah, the conditions of the, of the tool of the room. And uh, last but not least, um, your preferences and teaching style also play an important role. So um, choose the methods and exercises that you like, that you prefer, and um, yeah, that uh, keep you as a teacher also authentic. Um, so you don't present something that you actually don't really like. Mm. If you um, choose methods and exercises, it's um, always a good idea to make a combination of social um, and work forms. <clears throat> Um, so you should change um, these, um, uh, these work forms um, during your training, um, if it's possible. 
Uh, for example, you have um, partner work and you do group work. Um, uh, some people learn better in, in group work and uh, some learn better in individual work. So it's good um, to change this during the training, um, especially if you have longer training sessions um, to uh, be able that everybody feels, um, yeah, feels uh, um, welcome and um, uh, is able to learn uh, in, in his or her preferred way. Um, another important thing is the basic forms of learning that people are able to um, analyze, order, uh, remember, explain, read, practice, write something. Um, so um, you should also look um, at how um, you're creating um, your, your components and, and your contents, um, if people are able to actually do something to, to, to learn. Um, next step, um, you would also uh, create, of course, um, the working materials. Um, as I said, this could be um, worksheets or um, uh, also a script or a kind of photo protocol if you do face-to-face -face training, for example. Um, and um, it can be important um, to think about when you want to distribute um, this working materials. So um, at the moment um, in this training, uh, you um, usually get um, the contents after um, the, the day. Um, so after the, the training day, um, sometimes it can be also useful to do this before um, so that people can orient themselves um, that it's, um, also transparent for them um, to, to already um, yeah, connect uh, their knowledge uh, to what um, is, um, um, what is uh, taught in the uh, training. And um, of course, um, during the training, it directs the attention. So this can also be quite useful. Last but not least, the proof of concept. So um, at the end, you should, um, check um, all these points. So um, does the uh, agenda suit your target group? Um, is this relationship between introduction, the main part and the conclusion in a, um, yeah, in, in a good relationship? Um, does um, maybe the introduction take too much room or um, is there a conclusion at all? Um, is there a thematic and a social introduction? Uh, the alternation between inhalation and exhalation should be correct. Um, so you don't do too much inhalation and at, um, not um, uh, enough exhalation maybe. Um, is there a conclusion, an outlook, a transfer or feedback at the end? Um, are there any length, for example? Is the timing right? Um, so um, you should also check if your slides are in the right order, if you're um, telling uh, everything um, in the right order. And um, do you actually pursue your targets? Um, and um, very important um, at the end, would you like your workshop if you participate yourself? So um, this is um, also a good thing to prove your concept. Okay, I um, am at the end of the seven steps of concept development. We have development. one question. We have mm -hmm. one question before you move. Do you have specific recommendations for the reuse of training materials? Ellen, Ellen asks. Um, <laughs> yeah, a very good uh, uh, question from Ellen. Um, so of course, um, you can also, um, this is, um, um, a part of the first um, first steps um, when you do your mind map and you collect all that um, there is a, around a training topic. Um, you, um, um, I will go to the slide again. Um, so um, when you collect contents, it is also a really, really useful to look at um, already existing training contents and training materials. So if there's already something there, um, you, should, um, you should be, uh, or you should at least look at it, uh, uh, check if it's um, useful um, for reuse. And um, of course, this is also important, um, check the license. So um, are you able to, um, to reuse uh, the content 
uh, or not. And maybe you also have to contact uh, the creators um, for checking this. Um, but I can only recommend um, reusing training materials and um, in the um, uh, in the trainer trainer uh, concept that we developed, we also uh, reused a lot of materials. Um, the link um, again, I will share um, in, the, in, in the chat in a few seconds. So this is uh, the link that I meant. Any more questions? Regarding the seven steps or regarding training at all. Can you perhaps uh, say something about how much time it takes for you know an hour of uh, a seminar to prepare all this? Uh... Yeah, it depends a bit how how familiar you are already with the topic. So um, if you already know a lot about the topic and uh, you don't have to read up a lot of things, it uh, it doesn't take so much time um, for this. Um, open opening topic um, and, and um, uh, ordering and setting priorities and maybe also reducing the content and the teaching script is also created fairly easy um, but um, uh, maybe um, the the methods and exercises um, the preparing of the slides um, might take a bit of time uh, it's a it's a bit difficult to to say how long it might take because um, most of the time this is a process. So you start, as I said, you should start as early as possible. Um, you start with brainstorming. You start with collecting the content, and um, um, if you already have very good material, this might take like I don't know one or one or two weeks, um, where of course you don't do this all the time, but um, sometimes um, yeah you do research and then you start with the slides and stuff like that. Um, so um, as I said, if if you are already familiar with the topic, this can be quite fast, and if you or if you have to work yourself into the topic and um, yeah, check for content, check for materials. Um, this can take a few weeks or even longer. We have another question from Nelly. Mm -hmm. uh, how much preparation can you ask people to do before a workshop? Is it re reasonable to say, ask people to spend two hours reading something? When does preparation become a burden instead of something useful or engaging? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, this uh, goes maybe more into this um, into this um, working materials um, uh, part. So um, yeah, it's a it's a it maybe also depends how long your training session then will be. So um, if you're um, doing a training session for let's say uh, two or four, four hours um, and people have to read two hours before that, um, it might be a bit too much, at least in my point of view. Um, but um, yeah, if you're looking at, um, I don't know, a, a longer training for two days or even, even more, uh, two hours might not be so so much um, in contrast uh, to the training session. So it, I'm, I think it, it depends a bit um, uh, first on the training session duration and then of course also um, uh, on the yeah on the target what should um, the, the reading um, should um, should help with or what what should be achieved with this. And um, also, um, in which kind of um, yeah, which kind of training this actually is. So, for example, for students, um, if they prepare for a lecture, the two hours uh, would not be so much. Um, but um, if I think about my professors at the university, if I would ask them to read something for two hours before joining my fifteen-minute coffee lecture, this would be quite strange. So um, I think. Yeah, you have to check for your target audience. Again, you should check um, if the balance is there uh, regarding the timing. 
and this would be important. Any more questions? Yeah, somebody's saying uh, MOOCs or videos might be a good alternative to play some basic knowledge. This is a very good suggestion. Um, I can only recommend that um, and, and support it. Um, yeah, it's a very good um, idea to also use uh, something like that. And um, of course, you can also use a Moodle course, for example, to collect something like that. Um, or yeah, uh, there are a lot of great resources um, like uh, the mantra course, um, which you can uh, reuse, for example, for um, for your training and um, Um, there's another question. Can you give an example of exhalation? Are questions a kind of exhalation? Yeah, um, exactly. So um, if you, um, uh, we go to the exhalation phase maybe again. Um, um, if you um, try to um, create an exhalation phase, um, um, it's, it's important that um, people try to, or the participants um, try to uh, work with the content that you presented before. So um, either they try to remember what they heard before, or they try to, um, try to transfer uh, this knowledge uh, to another topic. Um, uh, a question can, can be part of a exhalation uh, phase where you ask, um, what do you remember about um, for example, the learning process of Klaus Döring. Um, so um, uh, that you can check if uh, people actually were able to listen and, and um, understood properly what you wanted to say. Uh, so this would be, for example, the re reproduction of knowledge. Um, I uh, used this, um, uh, um, this, this question about what, is, uh, what do you think are criteria for good training? Uh, to um, yeah, be able for you to also connect with your with your knowledge uh, that's already existing, um, that you maybe also uh, reproduce um, knowledge uh, that you had uh, from from other sessions before, and um, that you can um, apply it maybe in this um, in this um, training session. Um, there's another comment in the concept context of RDM MOOCs. Some are created within the Obert project and should be available quite soon. They will combine RDM training with open badges certification. This sounds really interesting. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and Ellen said that MOOCs take a lot of time to create and support. Exactly. So um, it would be also useful to check for MOOCs um, that are already available and um, they are already some MOOCs available also on RDM content um, and open science, for example. So um, it's really useful to have a look at that. Um, yeah, somebody's also um, pointing to the MOOCs um, that I just mentioned, I think. <laughs> um, and Alan also, um, mentions the data management expert guide from SESTA, which I can also only recommend. So um, there's a lot out there. And um, yeah, I think you you only have to, um, uh, yeah, to look for it. There's a lot for you re for your reuse. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kerstin. I think um, this was a very useful presentation and it's really nice to see that people are starting to discuss in the chat. So I would um, yes. I would say if people have questions or comments, keep uh, posting posting them in the chat mm -hmm. and we, we can kind of take the last couple of uh, minutes that we have to um, round up the workshop. 